In this video, guys, we're going to look at the Stochastics Hooks Trade, day trading strategy for S&P 500 and your Forex currency pairs. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a warm welcome to you. Okay, so some of the best trading strategies out there revolve around aligning yourself with a higher time frame trend, but using the lower time frame to fine tune your entries. We've talked a lot about strategies if you're subscribed to the channel. Appreciate your support, thank you. But if you looked at some of the videos before, watch the videos before, should I say, you'll see that a lot of the best strategies or strategies we look at and take and share on the channel for kind of us to digest myself personally and see if there's any use in them, I can implement to my own strategy and for you to do the same. A lot of them go, hey, align yourself with the bigger time frame trend and then use that as a kind of leg in to find the actual trigger on a lower time frame. So with that being said, let's have a look at this stochastic curl strategy. So what I have in front of you is, and I know it might be seem a bit cramped on this screen here, but you'll get the idea. We have the S&P 500 in the form of an ETF, Spiders ETF, purely because it's easier to see. We haven't got the 24 hour chart on it. I think if you're trading the major currency pairs like Euro, US dollar, US dollar, JPY and cable, um, to name three, you're probably fine obviously with 24 hour chart. Okay, so top of the screen I have uh, 60 minute chart, bottom of the screen I have a five minute chart. And the stochastics are an interesting setting, guys. Percentage K is set at 12, percentage D is set at three, and smoothing is set to six. So play around with it, depending on what chart platform you've got. What you want is not many signals. The idea with this is you want as fewer signals, but when you do get them, they're powerful. So what are the rules of the trade? The rules are you look to see what the trend is doing on the one hourly chart. Is it uptrending? Is it downtrending? If it's uptrending, you will only look for long trades. If it's downtrending, you are only going to look for short trades. Okay, so we're in an uptrending environment on the hourly. Let's zoom in and look at this chunk, for example, uptrending along here. Uh, and you can see actually the cursor when it matches with the price on the hourly, so you can see where we are. Now, what we're trying to do when we're in an uptrend environment, so if we've been in an uptrend for four or five days, we are looking, uh, let me get it so we can see what's going on. So we've been in an uptrend for multiple days. Okay, we are looking to get on board when the stochastic goes below into oversold territory, i.e. the percentage K, which in this example is the blue line, goes into oversold territory. I've got my oversold set at 20, my overbought set at 80. When it comes back up, we're looking to go long. Don't forget, we've got to be in an uptrend to do this. If we're in a downtrend on the on the on the uh, six, on the 60 minute chart, we'd flip it and be going short when we're in overbought condition. So we're in an uptrend now, but an uptrend for two days, we're good. We're looking to go long. So at the end of this, we get a first oversold after we've been in an uptrend for multiple days. We're going long. Um, how does that work out for us? Let's just look at this. Uh, if I can get this and I can zoom in for you so we can see without making it too crowded. Very nicely, we get a nice long entry here, gaps up, and next time we go overboard is a good time to exit or align yourself and use it as a trigger on your five minutes to hold on your hourly. So you say, you know what? I see a good trend on my hourly chart. I want to get on board it. Let's go to my five minute, use those settings on the stochastic first oversold. I take it and I use that to run on the hourly for multiple days. However, if you're scalping it out, it's working nicely. Next one we're looking at here, we've got oversold condition here. We're buying it as we're curling back up. You know what? You don't get much out of that. You don't get much before it rolls back over. You're probably going to be stopped out, but the stop is not too brutal. We can take that. This one here, again, we're going in here on a low. We get a nice little run up there before it eventually rolls over to the end of the day. Uh, a good trade. I think that one, if you held it longer, obviously be stopped out on that. Now we start to look deeper into the cycle. Um, and some the point of this, guys, is it's going to get you on monster moves. That's the key. Yes, you're going to get on some little retracements and stuff, but the idea is you're going to get on the big moves. If this thing is seriously trending, it's a good sweet spot rather than chasing on the 60 to wait for the 5 to curl a little bit to give that oversold reading to jump on it. And here's a great example of that. You know, we start to go oversold here. We start to push back up. You're in at 267, 267 and a half and the thing just rips and you're getting out of 269. You know, that's a big, big profitable trade. And even so, if you 
kind of decided if you look at a one hour chart we go above and we say we're in around here you know you're in for a multiple three or four day move if that's part of your thesis i get in hindsight we can say oh look you're in for a multiple day move isn't this the most genius strategy in the world i get it it's not always like that but it can turn into that if you're using that lower time frame trigger with a broader signal so rules again just to summarize guys uptrend or downtrend on our 60 minute chart if we're chopping we don't want to get involved in it. What a good, solid uptrend. This isn't the best cherry-picked example either. We're better off picking something where we've got a good, reasonable uptrend for a long period of time. This has kind of got an uptrend for two or three days, which I think ticks the boxes in my eyes. Then it goes to five. You've got your settings on your stochastic. You wait for your your oversold to come back off oversold. As it comes back oversold, oversold, you're buying at that point. So this example we had, you're buying around that level here as it comes off, and then you're riding it for as long as you dare. Overbought condition on your stochastic if you want. Close end of the day if you want. Three day move again if you're in the most powerful, a good powerful trend. Three day move is a perfect kind of environment to trade it as well. So, some flexibility there, but just some ideas of how to get on board those 60 minute trends without chasing the thing uh, and using a kind of indicator strategy. All right, guys, take care. See you next one. Bye bye.